Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are trying to go over every single material UI component. In today's video, we are looking at the transfer list component. Now, this component's a bit different from any other material UI component you might see because in essence, it's not really a component and I'm not quite sure why it got put in the actual components list. In essence, all it is is sort of a custom a sort of uh, component, I guess, a custom like functionality that Material UI made out of the existing components. And really, I think this should be in maybe a different uh, MUI repository, maybe not the core Material UI um, one. But anyways, we're still gonna go over it. And if, I find, if you find value in this video, make sure you leave a comment, it helps a lot with the algorithm, and hit that subscribe and notifications bell if you wanna learn more about React and Material UI. So let's jump into it. Essentially, when looking at the transfer list, this is all it is. Basically, it's two separate lists with a little uh, button uh, group in the middle. And if you were to, for example, click on some of these, you could swap it to that side. And if you were to click on all these, you could swap it to this side or you can move everything from one side to another. And essentially, it's comprised of a couple of different components that are important to note. The first one is that both of these things are lists, which inherit from the list component. The second one is all of these are list items. And the third one is each list item has over here checkboxes that you can click in order to select them. And once you understand that, you can actually break this example down and understand it in a lot easier of a manner. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the code over here and sort of walk you guys through it. The first thing you need to know is essentially they have three uh, state variables. One is to uh, keep track of every item that is checked. One is to keep track of every item that is in the left list. And one is to keep track of every item that is in the right list. And by the way, if you want to straight up just use this uh, component in your application, feel free to just copy all of this code and modify it however you need. But I'm just going to go through it and try to explain how everything works so you get a clear understanding of how it was all built. So. Once you understand that we have these three state variables, you can see that all they do is they initialize half the items in one of the lists and half the items in the other list. So that by default, um, when the user first opens up the application, there are some things in each side of the list. Then they have sort of a variable here that pretty much tells you what is checked in left and what is checked in right. And for that, all they do is they intersect the two arrays, the checked array and the left array. This checked array will contain all the checked components reg um, items, regardless of which list it is in. So, for example, um, if you have for uh, you know zero and one checked and four and five checked inside this checked array, you will have zero one four five. But when we go to get left checked, because you're intersecting that checked with the items that are in the left, um, you this left checked will be pretty much just an array of zero and one, and right checked will be an array of just four and five, because you insert, intersect the two lists. Then you have a couple of different functionalities. So number one is handle toggle. This is the function that will get called whenever you click on one of the checkboxes. And essentially all it will do is if um, the, it, it's already checked, then all you will do is um, make it so that the uh, checked array is, uh, they make a copy of the checked array um, and then they set it at the end of it. But uh, what they do here is they're pretty much saying, okay, if it's already checked, remove it from the checked array and then set the checked array equal to this new array with the element removed. And if it's not already removed, so if the current index equals negative one, AKA we could not find um, uh, that value in the current checked array, then all you're gonna do is push it to the che new checked checked array and then they just set uh, the checked array equal to the previous checked array with the uh, new value added in. So that part is pretty simple. You're pretty much just removing or adding the element to the checked array depending on whether or not it was already checked. Then you have specific handlers for all the different buttons. So if you wanted to move everything to the right, uh, it, you use the handle all right. If you want to uh, handle anything that is checked, to the right or handle anything that is checked to the left, use the respective uh, functions and the same for handle all to the left. So let's go ahead and just look at how the handle all works first. Um, the first thing they do is if you wanna move everything to the right, all they're doing is they are setting the right array equal to the current right array 
and they concatenate everything from the left array. So essentially, because you're moving everything from left to right, anything that's already in left, you're going to move it to the right, and then you're just going to set the left array to be empty. And the logic is the same for if you're moving everything to the left, except you're concatenating everything from the right to the left and setting the right array empty. Now, the last piece of complex logic before we jump into the JSX is just going to be the handle checked right and the handle checked left. Essentially, for handle checked right, um, all they're doing is moving any items that might have been checked on the left over to the right. So the first thing they do is they set the right equal to anything uh, that was checked from the left. Then all they are going to do um, after that is they are going to remove all the items that they just moved from the left array and also remove them from the checked array. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And they do the same thing except from uh, for the check left from uh, left to right instead. And the logic there is sort of a bit daunting when you first see it. But once you sort of break it down into these steps uh, like we've done here, it sort of becomes easier to I, um, to uh, look at. So now let's look at the actual JSX and re, uh, Mitoy UI stuff that's going on here. So first you can see um, they have a component, a functional component that they've made for each list. So this custom list component will be used twice. Once for the left, uh, once for the left, list and once for the right list and you can see all they're passing in is just the items uh, for both sides and once the items get passed in all they do is they wrap it inside of a paper which just gives it this nice sort of background and then um, they go through a list they create a list and for each list item they just map through every item which essentially is just going to be uh, comprised of the value so you know list item one two three four and then within that all they do is they have a list item they have a little icon and then they wrap the checkbox inside the icon and of course for this checkbox all they're doing is um, you know checking whether or not it is already checked um, and on the list item, they are uh, passing in that handle toggle function that we looked at. So um, that makes the reason they didn't pass that into the checkbox is because if they passed it specifically into the checkbox, you would have to click on the checkbox to check it. But here, um, it's sort of a better user experience where you can check anywhere on the list item and it will go ahead and check it. So that's the reason they have this on click on the list item and not the checkbox. And then, of course, uh, they just have some text that tells you which list item it is. And you can see if we scroll down to the actual return statement of the um, the transfer list uh, function um, that over here the first thing they split it up into grid components which uh, we'll cover in another video but essentially just look at grids uh, as like an easy way to lay your page out sort of like flexbox but wrapped in material UI um, and in one piece of the grid all they've done is they've split the page up into three columns uh, so you have this first uh, column, the second column, and the third column. In the first column that you can see uh, through this grid item, they're passing in uh, the list component with the left items. Then in the second column, they have all of their buttons um, over here. Um, and in the third one, they have simply all of the other list items for the right list. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All they had to do after that was pass in all the on-click handlers uh, to each button um, to correspond to all the on-click handlers we talked about before. And you have a functional um, component. And like I said, this one's a bit weird because this is sort of just them making one. And they actually have a whole Mental UI repository of pre-made uh, bigger components that they used out of their base components. Um, so I'm surprised that this isn't in that repository and it's in the main Mental UI repository. But nonetheless, we are covering every single component in this repository. So I thought I'd talk about it. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment. If you have any questions, uh, it helps a lot with the algorithm and I'll try to answer them. And if you found value in it, let me know by hitting the subscribe button and hitting those notifications if you want to learn more about reacting until UI and I'll see you guys in the next video.